Good evening or good afternoon, wherever you are around the world. This is Stephen with the regular weekly podcast from Podbean. And I'm grateful to Podbean uh, for everything that they do for us. And I'm just tweeting this out, doing it live. So the tweet's gone out and that's everything underway. Okay. Right, today was a beautiful sunshiny day in in Wiltshire. Despite what's going on around us, we still have to make our own lives and whilst social distancing and taking care and wearing masks when we go indoors. And it, after th three or four shops, taking the mask on and off, you decide that the best thing to do is to actually keep the mask on. These are strange times. We've been told that we're going to have a second wave of coronavirus and we're making a difference to the way we conduct ourselves because and I work from home and when we do go out, we social distance. So it's the uh, about common sense really. Common sense is, is not something that we can take for granted. Um, in Bolton, which is in the north of England, in Lancashire, uh, they have under lockdown at the moment, and they had a sudden increase of instance of people actually being confirmed with COVID-19. And they tracked it down. And it was one young man who had returned from Europe from his holiday and decided that when he got back and going into quarantine for two weeks which is what he should have done he went out for four nights in a row to local bars with his friends and which that two days after he got back he was diagnosed with COVID and he'd effectively spent two days actually passing it on and that led to an increase so we have to be careful but it only works if we're all careful okay so on to what motivates me and as you know by now i enjoy going for walks and today we went for a special walk we well angelica booked us in to go to devices of sizes devices of sizes is it's a Palladian building is the best way to describe it. It's got four columns outside and then an amazing building be behind. And it was built in 1835. Now, in order to get a building of that size constructed, it took money. And what they did was they asked for a public, su public subscription, which meant that the townsfolk and people from outside the town's boundaries actually contributed to the building of devices of sizes. And it was the court in which cases in show were actually tried. And it went on until 1980. From 1835 to 1980, 145 years, its purpose in life was to act as a court. And uh, I mean, we just got interested in it recently uh, through Angelica, and we're going to be looking further back into its history. But in 1980, the new court was built, and the court in Devizes was effectively abandoned. And it passed through a series of owners, but it had no money spent on it for 40 years, 35 years. Um, and it fell into disrepair. It's falling apart and that's not good you don't want a historic building it's a listed building to actually become decrepit uh two years ago it was decided to bid for the building which was in private hands and a trust was put together to raise funds to purchase the building in order to restore it and they're still raising the funds but the restoration has begun and it looks like it's a, going to be a success. In Devizes, we also have the Wiltshire Museum. Now, the Wiltshire Museum was started by local farmers to actually store uh, things that they found. Now, when I say things that they found, we are close to Stonehenge 
and therefore was a lot of history history to actually be discovered and it was all being it's all being stored at the Lutz Museum in fact they have uh, the best collection of artifacts recovered from around Stonehenge all on display in the museum but all on this not right they don't have a space they actually have some gold which was found at Stonehenge and it's a little known story that they found gold and it is on display at the Welsh Museum. Now the Welsh Museum is in all premises near the centre of town and they just don't have enough space. Most of what they have collected is actually held in storage. It can't be seen, there's no space. So when Wiltshire Museum saw that the device sizes would be available, they became interested, possibly before. And now the Wiltshire Museum will move into sizes building and bring it back to life. And we went to we went for a walk today and we went to the sizes. Okay, I want to say devices of sizes but it's well the sizes for now will do and they had on display at the rear of the building an outline of what devices of sizes was and their plans for it and you could walk around in the on a windy day you could walk and actually read about what has happened in 1835 to 1980 what's going to happen uh, in restoring the sizes and it's fascinating to see how they're actually going to evolve to a space for the museum to display more of its artifacts, which is absolutely brilliant. And to, in addition to that, to have a cafe, to have uh, meeting rooms, training rooms, and it's gonna be a splendid building, but it's gonna take 10 years. So I do hope, sincerely hope, that in 10 years time, I will be able to report on Podbean of the opening of Devices of Sizes. Thank you to uh, Angelica for arranging today's trip. No shops, and it's the first time we've been around the town centre in ages, and more shops are open. And Devices is full of two things, one, three things. One is public houses, and we've got our fair because we have a brewery in town, and the brewery own quite a few public houses. The second thing we have is a lot of coffee shops. We've got all the major chains in Devizes, and we've got a lot of independents as well. So if you ever want a coffee, Devizes is the place to come, and you can have any flavour of coffee you like. And the third thing we have is charity shops. And there is the Devizes charity shop walk, where you can start off in the town centre, and you can walk the streets, Little Britox, Britox, and through to the next street, and you can go in about we've between 10 and 15 charity shops, and it's always good to go and try and find a bargain. Um, so that's that's devices and the walk, and stunningly we did four miles uh, by going to the assizes and then walking around town. It's easy to clock up the miles when you're actually enjoying what you're doing and you're paying no heed to your Fitbit until you actually get back and no heed to my walk either. It's just a joy to be about at the moment with everything that's going on. Right, to my set of notes about what I'm going to talk about today. So I've talked about the sizes. And the next thing I'll talk about is a radio station, which is now on air 24 hours a day, seven days a week, United World Radio. I'll put a link in. Uh, to the radio station, which you're welcome to come and listen to. It plays a, it has a music jukebox of about a growing number of tunes, hundreds of tunes, which are out during the course of the day. The owners of the radio station are Fonz, and Nigel, and myself. And between the three of us, we're actually pulling things together. Uh, this is our testing period where we're actually looking for uh, podcasters and musicians so we can have regular shows. The, the, the radio station itself is a mixture of music because we are licensed to uh, play music via Toronto Cast. Host, 
not only host but provide the software as well and toronto cast big shout out to them they make everything that we're doing possible and uh, kudos to funds for actually finding them we've always wanted a radio station now we have it it's becoming real i've started to promote it today which means it's even realer if that's a word and uh, i've done a blog post and i've got the uh, radio player in there so you can actually listen live on my website a live video training again i will put the link in so that you can take a look it's, it is amazing if you decide to do something. This is the motivation. Motivation for doing this is for my love of music, which I've always had. My tastes are eclectic. I can go from rock to classical to folk and also to, well, to any genre, to reggae. And it's brilliant to be able to put a collection of my musical taste on the radio. Fonz is putting his taste on and so is Nigel. And we're adding to that musical taste with podcasts. If you have a podcast and you'd like it to be played live on the radio twice a week, then please do. We did a live broadcast yesterday, Fonz and I, on YouTube about the radio station. It was a bit difficult to handle because Fonz was out and about on his mobile as a social gathering out in the sunshine. I was in the studio on desktop, but we did talk about what we're aiming for in united world radio and again i'll put a link to the blog post which contains the video into this podcast um but if you've any interest in live radio then please do i've had the headphones on for the last hour or so just pottering away and listening to the radio station and we had we've got a lot of syndicated podcasts of high quality not that ours aren't high quality, but they are high quality podcasts at which we are rebroadcasting on air on United World Radio. Okay, now I come on to my rant of the week. And my rant of the week is about Facebook. And the story started before my last podcast, in fact, that I didn't realize it. I spent last weekend tracking down what Facebook had actually done and making sense of it. Uh, basically, just to go back in history, if you're on VLive, you're on StreamYard or Zoom or even on Ecamm and you schedule a live broadcast on the 11th of September, when you scheduled it, Facebook created two posts. One was a promotional post and the second was the post which would have the live video on it. And if you scheduled your post on BeLive or StreamYard, then they would have a link to take you straight to the live. And it's as simple as that. It worked, it was painless, it was so easy to do. Facebook decided on the 11th of September to actually stop posting the second post. Now, this meant that the links that were to buy everybody just simply wouldn't work. The, the post was not there to go to. So in web terms, we've got a 404 or Facebook's equivalent. So this page is not found. Somebody must have done something. Well, yes, somebody did do something. Facebook didn't create that second post. And that means that it makes our lives as broadcasters millions of broadcasters more complicated now i want to say at this juncture that if you schedule a broadcast and then go live it still works if you schedule a broadcast and then you want to edit the post and you want to promote the post and you want to tell people about everything that's going to happen during your wonderful broadcast before you go live it's virtually impossible if you edit the first post, I hope you're still with me, you edit the first post, which is the promotional one. If you edit it, it disappears in a puff of smoke. So you cannot edit it. So if you can't edit it, then how do you cross post? A lot of people when they go live actually cross post to other pages. Now this 
increases your reach and it can be a quid pro quo you go live on some they can go live on yours you both win you reach each other's audiences and it, it's just so simple and straightforward to do providing this the second post is there but it's not and you edit the first post and you can't cross post the first post so a good situation where that first post cannot be edited because it will disappear it cannot be used to cross post because it's just a post it's not a video post and those are the two main things which are a problem now i got to the bottom of this last friday i reported it i'm just looking for a link i reported it and basically nobody took it overly seriously a week last friday of september and that's true across the board um i'd spent the weekend then investigating it and find out what was going on and i then uh created a blog post on my website and i'm just trying to get to it never mind i'll use that the next time um i created a blog post on my website explaining all about it uh and the, the reasons why it was a problem there is there are three or four more reasons that have turned up since and speaking to people it's becoming more prevalent more and more people are actually getting caught out by the fact that facebook no longer posts the second video post and it's totally avoidable i mean you've got a situation where be live streaming on zoom and ecamm are turning to facebook what's happening and facebook are trying to find out whether it's part of some bigger plan or whether it's just a mistake and they should switch it back on my vote for what it's worth is that they should actually switch it back on because if they switch it back on then it's not broken anymore it wasn't broken on the 10th of september um and it's just they didn't think it through no no facebook is a wonderful place to actually broadcast it's where we all enjoy broadcasting and that's not going to change because that's where the people we know are but facebook have shot themselves in the foot with this one because there is no easy solution there's no work around be live of taking the link that doesn't work and just now put a link to your page that you're broadcasting to and then afterwards they substitute the second post which is only created when you go live uh, so be live have done everything that they can to make sure that the system is still functional but from a broadcaster's point of view, as I said earlier, if you schedule and you just go live, it still works. If you schedule and you used to edit and promote the post, you can't do that anymore. And you've got to find a way around it. And I discovered the other day, it affects Ecamm as well. Ecamm schedule. Everybody who's a live broadcaster at the moment has been affected by actions taken by Facebook. In summary on this, YouTube still works perfectly, uh, but it does mean that the basic consequence of this is if you cannot edit a post because of a puff of smoke, if you can't promote a post because it's not the real post, then you're losing an audience and everybody is losing viewers because they are. It's difficult to actually maintain your viewership with a broken system. And we've got people asking, what can I do? And the answer is that you've basically got to do extra work. You've actually got to create your own post and say, okay, this is the post I want you to go to. And as soon as we go live, you'll see the link in this post and click it. And that's that's the way, I, what I'm gonna do this week is I'm going to have one post on Be Live in Five, and one post on the Video Hub. And basically, I'm going to market that. And everybody, if you're interested in our shows this week, thank you. This is the one post to go to this week. And different, I'll do a different post each week so that everybody knows when you're going to go live. So it will have the schedulers this week because I do seven shows a week. And it will have, as soon as I've gone, it will have the link. And I'm hoping that that is a way of actually retaining audience because not everybody gets notified. Unfortunately, if the notification system worked, then it wouldn't be as big a problem, but everybody's audience is down 
and it will be down until Facebook actually do something. We, in this instance, are unable to do anything. So there you go. All right, so that's a run over. One of the things that motivates me is my countdown clocks. When you go live, the connection time to Facebook and you is different. And when you go live to Scope, it's different. When you go live to Twitch, it's different. When you go live to Vimeo, they're all different. Which means as the host of the show, you've no idea when to start talking or start talking seriously. So I have done a series of countdown clocks. And the countdown clock is a 60 or 30 second countdown timer, which I put in Delphi and then filmed using Camtasia. And that's embedded into a video. Now the video is created on NVIDIA and the video has music, which I've licensed from Jamenda. It has the countdown clock. It has, I'm grateful to NVIDIA because they have possibly one of the best libraries of stock video that's around. And therefore I can take a stock video, my bit of software, some music from Jamendo, which I listen to and enjoy, and put them together and create a countdown clock. Now, I've created over 50 countdown clocks. They're all on YouTube. If you type into Google Countdown, you will see them all. So that's Showcaster, or one word, countdown. You'll see all the clocks. And to use a clock in your broadcast, you can do one of two things. You can just share the Uplay, or if you're on Be Live, you can copy the link into the Be Live Studio. It goes down into your staging and you can press play. So technically it's a breeze. It doesn't take too much to actually get it working. And when relaxing in the evening, I'm still scrolling Facebook. I, I'm just so grateful for the fact that without my knowledge, people are actually using these countdown clocks and I'm just scrolling down the page and all of a sudden, I recognize a kaleidoscope or I recognize flying over Hong Kong or I recognize steam trains. And these are people who enjoy playing the countdown clock at the beginning of their broadcast so they know when to start talking. But it's always a joy to actually see uh, a countdown clock in operation. And they're free, they're easy to use, and I probably make some more of them in October. I took a break because you, you, Go a situation where you can you can only whatever you're doing, you can only be creative for so long until you actually start getting into factory mode and churning them out. Now I was doing six countdown clocks at a time, which took me about two hours, which I mean it's cathartic. I enjoy doing it, so that's that's not the problem. But you get into a factory process where you get the music, you get the video. And you put it all together and in video works, it's magic and you've got a video at the end of it. But you do go into a factory and you actually lose your inspiration for it. I I knew I'd lost it when I did. I did a countdown clock of a tornado. And it's at times you forget that tornadoes are real things. And somebody said, I'm not going to use that. I can see a tornado outside my door. And you thought. Ah, tornadoes are not a good idea. Not as good an idea as, as a volcano because not too many people live near volcanoes. But I got into a rut is what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to get back on the road with clocks very shortly. Right, now to be live. And be live are going to have I could only say Belive are setting up for a stunning fourth quarter of the year uh, because there are things which are being tested at the moment which are going to totally enhance the way that we do live broadcasting. Now, I can't tell you what they are, but just take it. You have to take it on trust. I'm sure you will. That These things are things which people will find ultra useful and are going to expand uh, broadcasting to even more people, even more situations. And they're going to affect the way we actually broadcast. It's not like a nod in the uh, 10 people on screen uh, broadcast every scenario. Uh, that's not to say anything of StreamYard or Restream. Uh, 
but live are four people on screen, branded graphics, you created live selling or live collecting for charity within the broadcast. So be live more into functionality than they are into, well, they're not the normal broadcasting setup. They do care about their customers. They do provide excellent support on a one-to-one -one basis. The Belivers group is an amazing group of people who help and support each other, which is the wonderful thing about live broadcasting. There's no backbiting in live broadcasting. Everybody cheers everybody on. I'm just blown away by, by things that I've seen over the last two weeks on Belive. I've been using them one, one of them consistently now for two weeks. It's not let me down and it's been on display, public display, uh, on my profile, on the Be Live in Five page, on the live video hub. And it's just the sheer quality of the broadcast. Now, if, if I look back to 2016, when Be Live started, October 2016, uh, we were just lucky to be broadcasting. That was the thing. We we're actually two, three, four people live on air talking, and it was magical. And we didn't care about the quality. We didn't video, we didn't care about audio quality. We're just live and we're using internal cameras and internal microphones and just having a blast. Things have changed over the last couple of years and now we expect quality sound and we all expect to have an external microphone to give that quality sound. We also expect the live video to be of high quality. Now, live on YouTube, is 1080p and that's the best that we can get at the moment nobody has a setup not many people have got a rig for 4k uh, but 1080p and it's just an interesting time to actually be involved in live broadcasting and the fourth quarter for be live is going to be one which is most definitely a game changer hopefully i did that without giving too many hints and giving too much away I'm just glad to be involved uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, over the coming week, I'm going revisiting the Be Live YouTube course, well, Be Live course which is on YouTube. I'm going to be redoing that from scratch and dating October uh, uh, with all the changes that have been made since I did the last one. So that's what I'm busy with next week. Also, date on the live video production blueprint. Joe in charge, but he's now in charge. And the live video production blueprint is being created and we'll have meetings about it in the next couple of weeks to actually bring it to life. Thank you for listening to this podcast today. I've got into a regular thing now. I mean, I, I, before I started this, I was tired. Now I'm awake. Um, so I'm getting into being live at this time. I think it's going to continue. Uh, I'm going to start thinking about topics for next week. If you listen live, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. This will reappear as a podcast tomorrow when it will have music. So thank you for listening. Take care. And I will see you next week live on Be Live on Facebook and YouTube. Bye.